This presentation looks at how to prevent moisture problems in construction. Flashings, building paper, and house wrap probably come to mind, and these are important components. But even with those materials, we've seen an increasing trend of failures. While EFs and stucco get a bad reputation, stucco and thin stone face the exact same issues. And now, with exterior rigid insulation behind stone, we are recreating the EFs scenarios that led to trouble in the 90s. Here are just some of the examples of failures in relatively new buildings, some of them less than a year old. We see house wrap and building paper. While sometimes there are obvious flaws in the detailing, there are cases where the assembly experienced normal wetting but just couldn't dry. Here an extra layer of building paper was added in an attempt to protect the wall, but just adding another barrier doesn't do very much. Moisture problems are expensive, too. Moisture-related failures make up the majority of these warranty claims against the nation's largest home builders. The question always becomes, who's to blame? Who is going to pay for this? The designers, the masons, the manufacturers, other tradespeople? The reality is that in this scenario, the only winners are the lawyers. We need to digest a couple of realities. The first is that masonry is not waterproof, and most sidings aren't. The second is that walls have always gotten wet, but if they dry out quick enough, there is no problem. And finally, barrier products are imperfect. We know that building papers and house wraps break down if they sit in wet conditions over time. They have thousands of holes in them, but if there's a gap for drainage, intentional or not, those barrier products won't leak. Here's some perspective from builder and building scientist Peter Yost. Things get wet and heat dries them out. Energy efficiency measures reduce heat loss, so energy and moisture have to be managed with equal intensity. I've certainly noticed a lot of energy-related changes in the codes recently, but not much has changed with regard to moisture. When I think of drying something out, I think about putting wet clothes into my dryer. There are two forces that are drying those clothes out. One is airflow, and the second is heat. When we look at the changes to the building enclosure in the past 20 years, we've really changed the airflow through the wall and the amount of insulation. Both of those changes have reduced the drying power in the wall. They're not bad things, but they have consequences. Another change that we've seen is we are using more and more OSB, which doesn't dry very well and is more susceptible to mold than plywood. Also, we're using water-resistive barriers, house wraps and building papers that don't do well when they are constantly wet. A reality is that old drafty walls dried out, and so older buildings are typically more durable. We don't have to use old drafty construction techniques in order to get durable walls, but since we've changed how we manage energy, we need to change how we manage moisture. As part of a solution, Beagle Stone offers an enhanced moisture control system. This system is based on rain screen design, which creates an air gap between the facade and the house wrapper building paper. This rain screen design prevents wicking or capillary action, it drains liquid water using gravity, and allows airflow to dry the assembly. This restores some of the drying power that we've taken out with the additional insulation and air sealing. Here's one image of a couple of these components. We see the EM3639 drainage mat with these vertical channels and the mortar blocking fabric. The vertical channels allow moisture to drain to the bottom of the wall and exit, and the mortar blocking fabric protects those channels so that the mortar doesn't clog them. The fabric is also wrapped around the back so that we have an insect guard at terminations. We also see the LR3639 weep screed. This weep screed is a little different. It features large slots to drain liquid water and allow airflow to ventilate the rain screen air gap. An air gap is allowed by code to replace the outer layer of building paper or house wrap.
Testing shows that rain screen systems perform significantly better than code minimum systems. This lab test compared a code minimum wall with two layers of paper, lath and scratch coat, to a system with the building paper, rain screen drainage mat, lath and scratch coat. Moisture sensors were embedded on the face of the sheathing and each layer of paper to measure moisture over time. When the code minimum system with two layers of paper was sprayed, the layers got wet and stayed wet for days in dangerous levels that support rot and fungal growth. But with the rain screen system, the layers simply didn't get wet. So let's look at the components a little closer, and then we'll get to detailing in just a minute. The full wall air gap over the building paper or house wrap is maintained by the EMC 3639, which is vapor open to allow the system to dry to the exterior. At the base of the wall, we need to let liquid water exit. With full width stone, we can use the SCW3639 or WOW3639. They both create tunnels for drainage on the flashing. They work better than rope weeps, which don't wick very well, or tubes and vents that end up above the bed joint mortar. With adhered stone, we can use the WOW3639 or the LR3639 weep screed, which has large slots for drainage and ventilation. Any time that we have an interruption in the drainage plane, such as at a window or door, we need to let the water escape or divert it. The WOW3639 weep is used on window drip cap flashings to let the water exit the wall in thin or full stone. The MD3639, or moisture diverter, can be used to divert moisture from the drainage plane away from the rough opening in inset applications or as a belt and suspenders approach with the weeps. Let's take a look at some of the more common details. On the left we have our base detail. The EMC3639 drainage mat is installed over the building paper with a hammer tacker and terminates in the LR3639 weep screed. The mortar blocking fabric faces you as you install it. At the base of the wall, back wrap the fabric to create a bug screen. On subsequent courses, the plastic gets butted and the fabric gets lapped over the courses below. On the right, we have a run to grade detail for a premium appearance with stone running all the way to grade. Here, a flashing line is created with flexible flashing, and WOW3639 weeps are installed 10 inches on center at the low points in the flashing. The EMC3639 is installed over top with the fabric lapping over the weeps. Trim the excess fabric to not protrude from the wall. Install the last scratch coat and stone. When the joint mortar is thumbprint hard, score and snap off the weeps at the face of the wall and brush the joints. Another common detail is a siding transition. The EMC3639 can also be used behind siding. At transitions such as a stone wainscoting, flash the upper detail at the capstone. On the right we have a window detail. At windows, install the WOW3639 weep above the drip plate with the EMC3639 fabric lapping over the weeps. This prevents the mortar from clogging the weeps. On inset windows where weeps are not practical, use the MD3639 moisture diverter to divert moisture away from the opening. Install the MD3639 at a quarter inch per foot slope to drain immediately above the opening and extend it four inches beyond the opening on both sides. Terminate the EMC3639 in the moisture diverter. Here is an image showing how moisture can drain from the WOW3639 on the drip cap flashing. Here is an example of the moisture diverter installed above an inset window. Flashing tape is used to integrate the moisture diverter with the house wrap. Once the thin brick or thin stone is installed, the moisture diverter is completely concealed.
Two other important details include the soffit. For maximum drying, we want to vent the EMC3639 below the soffit. Leave a small gap for ventilation between the termination and the soffit board. Use a soffit trim board to protect against wind-driven rain. On the right, we have a wall-to-roof intersection with a very important detail. The kick-out flashing used in this detail is a $15 piece of metal or plastic that can prevent $30,000 in repairs. We can see that the stone below the roof wall intersection has gotten very wet over time and trouble is lurking beneath. Use a kickout flashing in a place like this. Most of the details that we looked at will work in a thin or full stone application. The one major difference is the base detail in a full width stone application. Here the SCW3639 is rolled out on the flashing. This is a self-spaced weep that puts weeps every 10 inches on center. Roll out the product, lay the bed joint and mortar in the masonry units. When the mortar is thumbprint hard, score the weeps with the utility knife at the face of the wall, push down to snap off the weeps, and brush tool the mortar joints. The WOW3639 can also be used here. Let's do a quick recap. We know that sitting trapped water deteriorates the water resistance of building papers, house wraps, and flashing materials. We need to use physics, slope, and a space for drainage to prevent entrapped water. Another important reminder is that a wall is vertical. Any wall that isn't vertical should be treated like a roof. Building papers and house wraps have thousands of holes in them. If there is a gap for drainage, we know that they don't leak. And roof intersections absolutely need a kick out flashing to divert moisture away from the wall below. We're here to help you construct buildings that last. Visit our website for detailed drawings or get in contact with your Beekle rep for answers to your moisture management questions.